What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to week one of the CFL, where we are going to be first turning up this sick music. Um, I love Mirror Beast battle theme, but we're going to be going up against Jerry, coach of the Californian Cubones, and you're seeing some of his team on screen right now. This is the beautiful doc, the Google doc, that Sam, the head of the league, created, and I wanted to briefly show you just what his team is. He's got a Dragapult, Cinderace, Rotom Heat, Nidoking, and a Star Raptor, and then an unpictured Klefki, which make up a lot of his top tier picks. You can see there's a huge offensive presence. The Dragapult, which can, you know, set up with Dragon Dance, it can run Choice Specs, uh, Choice Band, Life Orb mixed with Fire Blast, Dragon Dart, Steel Wing for Fairy Coverage, um, Phantom Force, Hex, Shadow Ball, U-turn, it can, you know, Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, etc. It is an absolute threat. Cinderace, also a really, really scary mon to deal with. It has Libero, meaning it gets stab on all of its moves. It changes its typing with every move it uses. Has access to some great moves like Court Change, being able to switch the hazards on both sides of the playing field. And can also bulk up. It gets High Jump Kick for Fighting Coverage, Gunk Shot for Poison, Electro Ball for Electric. Um, U-turn for momentum, pyro ball for a strong fire type attack, and zen headbutt, sucker punch for priority. Great speed tier. It's such, such a scary Pokemon. And then Rotom Heat. Very, uh, very diverse Pokemon, mostly a utility mon in my opinion, but one that can be really threatening as well. It's got a great speed tier, levitate for an immunity, it can Spread Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, uh, Toxic, it can Defog, it can Nasty Plot, it can go for Overheat, which is a really strong Fire-type move. It can Bolt Switch, it can Spread Paralysis with Discharge, it can get some recovery with Pain Split. It's also a very difficult Pokemon to deal with. Nidoking is a really strong Special Attacker, primarily. Life Orb, great move pool in terms of Bolt Beam coverage, Earth Power, uh, Flamethrower, Sludge Wave, etc. And Star Raptor is an absolute physical monster with Reckless. It just does so much damage with its stab, Brave Bird, Double Edge. Uh, it gets access to close combat. It can also, again, get U-turn for momentum. Klefki is a bit of a pain, but it's almost exclusively a utility mod in setting up screens, spikes, or thunder waving things. Then we've got his lower tier picks. You can see Frostmoth, a potential setup Pokemon I'm not too afraid of, but it has a great special attack stat. It's just really hindered by its speed tier more than anything else. It has a pretty neat ability in Shield Dust, or not Shield Dust, <laughs> um, in Ice Scales, which halves the damage it takes from special type attacks, which is pretty impressive and allows it to actually get that chance of getting a Quiver Dance up. Honchkrow is a really strong physical attacker, potential sweeper, really only held back by its speed tier, but with access to priority Sucker Punch, which is stab coming off base 125 attack, uh, it's a really, really strong option, and it gets Moxie, meaning after every kill it gets, it gets plus one attack, just boosting that attack stat even more. Stab Brave Bird is also really helpful. Then there's Polyrath, which is a water immunity, potential rain abuser. It's typically run as a bulkier Pokemon on the ladder, but it can actually be a really a uh, threatening offensive presence too, um, with access to bulk up and special attacks like Scald or Focus Blast, but then also physical threats like Waterfall and does it get close combat or dr just Drain Punch? It can also run Belly Drum, which is also scary in its own right. Then there's Lycanroc uh, Midnight, which is not too, too threatening, but it is definitely an offensive presence. It has no guard, which is really important for making its stone edges actually accurate. Um, and it gets some other coverage moves. I forget all of them off the top of my head, but again, um, nothing too particularly crazy. And then Meganium, a Pokemon that I actually love. I'm also looking at some of these nicknames now, and they are, they're something. Um, <laughs> Meganium. <laughs> is a really just bulky grass type. It's access to aromatherapy, allows it to act as a cleric, it has reliable recovery and synthesis, it can set up leech seed, but otherwise it doesn't have much of an offensive presence. So it's um, not usually considered that great, but it could act as a great uh, bulky grass type. So let's talk about what I am bringing. There's a spoiler alert, but um, the first Pokemon I want to bring is Ditto. M namely because he has so many good offensive threats that I basically was thinking, I need to either outpace his offense or bulk up to try to take it on. And 
I ended up having to lean more towards Bulk in this one, just because I don't think my the offense my team can offer really outpaces his at all. And because his offense is so good, I figured why not try to utilize it myself? Uh, if I can, you know, mimic or imitate, uh, you know, Star Raptor or something, it can go for really strong Brave Birds. That'll be really helpful. If Dragon Dance or Dragapult goes for Dragon Dance, I can, you know, utilize that. Cinderace is a great Pokemon that he himself is weak to. So utilizing that against him will be really helpful. And then more importantly, so many of those Pokemon I mentioned, so many of those threats are incredibly versatile in terms of what moves they can run, what types of sets they can run. And knowing which types they are will be incredibly helpful in determining which Pokemon can defensively handle each of those offenses of threats so getting that information will be incredibly important so i'm thinking choice scarf ditto this is actually the only part of my team that i'm a little bit unsure on i might change that because a few of his pokemon know sucker punch including dragapult and i don't want to be stuck choice locked potentially into sucker punch and have that not work out because he could then, well, if he knows I'm choice locked into Sucker Punch, just continue setting up, etc. I'm forced to switch out and basically sack another Pokemon in order to get Ditto back in and try again with another mind game 50-50 of do I attack, do I Sucker Punch, whatever it may be. But we, um, we'll see. Let's see, next up is going to be Toxapex. Toxapex is something that I was really excited to bring. I needed it for physical defense against so many of his Pokemon. It's really helpful for Star Raptor and potentially any physically offensive Dragapult and physical Cinderace. Cinderace, uh, depending on what set it does, isn't is probably going to do about half with Zen Headbutt. But more importantly, I'm not going to get Okoed, <laughs> and I can afford to switch out. And depending on the item, I can switch out into different things because Cinderace has such an incredible move pool. But one thing I was really excited to do is. I could potentially take a Zen Headbutt and then tempt another Zen Headbutt and go for Baneful Bunker. Uh, because of some of the later Pokemon on the team, it's really, really important that I get anywhere from 10 to 20 or a little bit more than 20% chip on most of his offensive threats because they're relatively weak. And for me, being able to go for Baneful Bunker, which then poisons Cinderace, meaning it'll be taking 12% at the end of every turn, means it's really important that Cinderace gets or gets a lot of value out of its turns. So baiting it with, oh, it can two it KO me with Zen Headbutt, going for Baneful Bunker, potentially getting more recovery on that turn, poisoning Cinderace, and then forcing a 50-50 on, am I gonna switch into a Pokemon that is immune to a Psychic type move? Am I gonna switch into a Pokemon that is, um, you know, super effective against, or, or even resists it, whatever it may be. In terms of the move choice, I chose Scald because it gets good reliable damage on most things and I'd still appreciate burns on a lot of his physical attackers. It's great for punishing a potential Nidoking switch in. And then Knock Off. Knock Off is super important because it gets rid of so many items. It can hit Dragapult super effectively, more importantly, but it, but it gets rid of Life Orbs, it gets rid of Choice Scarfs, it gets rid of Choice Bands, it gets rid of so many ways that his Pokemon could potentially um, you know, boost their damage output against my walls, which is really important. And then it also gets rid of heavy duty boots on a lot of Pokemon and being able to get hazard damage again is really important towards getting that little bit of chip that'll enable a late game sweep and recover is there for reliable recovery of course. I considered running a Zen or uh, not, uh, not Zen but a Rocky Helmet set to potentially increase the chip that Cinderace would take but I figured with Baneful Bunker and potentially hazards that'll be just enough. So yeah that's uh, that's the Toxapex set. It's just max HP, max defense, because it, it literally needs every bit of defense it can get. However, it can also sponge some special hits if necessary from time to time. However, speaking of special sets, <laughs> Blissey! Uh, Blissey is coming along and is going to be surprisingly not running Wish Teleport, but is going to be running, you know, max physically defensive to take whatever physical defense, or whatever physical attacks it can, but I don't need any extra special defense investment to take any of the special hits it plans on taking. It completely walls special drag or special dragapult. It also walls um, Rotom Heat. It can take on, you know, it, t it takes less than half from a plus four overheat, which is which is pretty nuts. Uh, so I can actually beat that 1v1. Seismic Toss for reliable damage on most everything except for Dragapult, Toxic to do damage to everything else. I want to set up Stealth Rock as well. Those are really important. And then Soft Boil. This is also a status sponge Pokemon for me because of Natural Cure. And then 
Finally, I was like, okay, what offense can I bring? So we're bringing a Swords Dance Life Orb Adamant Rillaboom. Why Rillaboom? Well, first of all, Grassy Terrain is really helpful for Toxapex, Blissey, and Ditto, um, getting recovery, uh, helping sponge hits, and the like. But more importantly, um, my speed tiers don't really do as well against his team. And I mean, Halucha is really helpful, and, but I'd have to you know choice scarfs a bunch of my other mons. And Halucha still, it needs to get a Swords Dance off in order to actually knock out a lot of his Pokemon and take advantage of them. But I don't see very many opportunities to do that. So I figured Rillaboom would be a good idea because of the priority it potentially offers in addition to the defensive benefits. Namely, Grassy Glide is really strong. It does like 45% to Dragapult and Cinderace. So at plus two, it pretty much knocks them out. Um, that's assuming Cinderace is fire type, it might not be. And that's after rocks, after maybe a little bit of poison. It's pretty much at plus two knocks out most things. It obliterates Nidoking, it knocks out um, Staraptor after a little bit of chip. It's at plus two, I think does like 50 to 60% to a bulky defensive Rotom Heat. So even just a little bit of chip on that would be really helpful. And yeah, um, Rillaboom is really good against his team. The key is going to be potentially knocking off Rotom Heat's um, heavy duty boots or leftovers or whatever it may be when, because I anticipate that being his initial switch in. High horsepower is there specifically for Klefki because even at um, neutral that does like 80 to 90 percent i think so it does a lot there and yeah um you'll notice that i'm running swords dance and you might be wondering well where are you going to get the chance to swords dance rillaboom is bulky enough that it can usually take one hit and swords dance uh, depending on you know what hit it's potentially taking but there are also some pokemon i can potentially threaten out if they're low enough or if they're weak enough like Polyrath or Nidoking or whatever it may be. Um, if I know I'm going to get status by something like Klefki, I can potentially set up on that as well. And I have a Pokemon later that will create set of opportunities as well. In terms of the speed tier, I just wanted to outspeed base 71 Honchkrow because everything faster than that, I don't actually care about outspeeding. <laughs> Um, I'm only going to click knockoff. Well, R Rotom Heat outspeeds me at max speed by one base point. It's base 86 speed, whereas Rillaboom is base 85. So I'd imagine he's actually going to try to outspeed Rillaboom at max speed. Um, and so as a result, I'm not going to stay in on Rotom Heat to attack it anyways. Anything faster than Honchkrow, I'm just going to be kick clicking Grassy Glide unless it's a knockoff, you know, on a switch in. So I don't actually need any more speed than that 184. I can invest everything else in attack to do as much damage as possible, and then 72 in HP uh, to hit that nice life orb number um, of 359. And for those of you that don't know, um, a life orb number, basically life orb takes 10% of your HP at the end of each turn. And so if you get as close to a multiple of 10 as possible, without actually hitting that, um, you're overall increasing how much HP you retain over the course of multiple life orb recoil hits um, as you use different moves. And if you want to experiment with that with yourself, um, or for yourself, I recommend just kind of going through the calculations of, oh, how much you know HP damage would Rillaboom be taking if he was 360 HP versus 359? And yeah, this Pokemon will probably be how I win. <laughs> if I win, it's gonna be because Rillaboom gets to set up a Swords Dance after, you know, 10, 20, 20, 30 uh, turns of getting a little bit of chip on the rest of his team. So, what other offensive presence do I have? That's gonna be Chandelier. Running a Choice Scarf Chandelier, which, again, is really helpful in that it forces Cinderace to think twice about going for a high jump kick against something like Blissey, and it also, um, makes it think twice about going for something like a Pyro Ball against Chandelure, which would then get a flash fire boost. So fire immunity, fighting immunity is really helpful um, for everything on his team, potentially even close combat from Staraptor, Fire Blast from Dragapult, etc. Overheat from Rotom Heat, and then being able to fire off a really, really strong Fire Blast. And Shadow Ball is really strong too, it 2 KOs most members of his team. Uh, luckily, I have just enough speed to outspeed a Dragapult, and I could do that. Um, he also needs to fear Infiltrator, so if he's behind a substitute, there's a chance I'm an Infiltrator Chandelure and could go through that substitute and knock him out, um, which is also important. 
And then because I do splant or splan, wow, plan on spreading uh, status with Toxapex and Blissey, I also ran Hex because honestly I don't see much use for any other attacking move, not like Energy Ball or anything. Um, I'd much rather just be clicking Shadow Ball or Fire Blast most of the time. So if I do manage to get up Hazards and um, chip away at things and status most of his team, Hex will do a ton more damage. It'll be base 130 as opposed to Shadow Ball's base 80 and could open way for a Chandler late game sweep, which would be really nice. And then lastly, there's Memento, um, meaning that I could sacrifice Chandler to get minus two attack, minus special two attack on whatever I'm you know, up against. And that would provide a really nice opportunity for Rillaboom to Swords Dance and potentially sweep late game. So there's that. And then lastly, we have Umbreon, which is running a near max physically defensive set with a little bit of spadef bulk. Basically, this is my Dragapult counter. It kind of handles any Dragapult set. It has foul play, meaning it doesn't care about... As Dragapult boosts its own attack, it's, you know, boosting the damage that Umbreon will do to it with foul play. And it also has Heal Bell to potentially heal any of members of my team if Clef is spreading paralysis, if Rotom Heat is spreading things, if Dragapult is going for Will-O-Wisp, Thunder Wave, etc. I can heal my own team, and I can wish to heal up and make, you know, switching in other Pokemon easier, uh, whether that's Toxapex, Rillaboom, Chandelure, whatever it may be, um, as Pokemon are probably going to be forced to predict what um, I'm going to switch into in order to get super effective damage. Otherwise, my walls will probably you know, be able to switch in, heal up from a wish from Umbreon, which is still a pretty big wish, and comfortably sit there and go for a knockoff or spread another status, whatever it may be. Protect is there in case um, Cinderace wants to go for high jump kick against Umbreon and potentially take 50% damage from missing that high jump kick. And yeah, Foul Play does good damage to Staraptor, it does it to Nidoking, it does it to Cinderace, it does it, you know, good damage to a lot of his team because of how offensive they are, so very happy with that. And like I said, this is a good Dragapult counter because it takes on the physical side of things um, and can KO it back with Foul Play even if it sets up. If it doesn't set up, it's not too big KO'd, and if it's special, it tanks hits like a champ. If it is status spreading because of Synchronize, whatever status Umbreon gets, Dragapult will also get. So so yeah, very happy to have this around. Some of the threats on his team will require some real, um, I guess, crazy maneuvers, namely Staraptor, but I think this team can do it. I think it can. It has a good amount of bulk. It'll be really important to figure out what types of moves Jerry is bringing on his team, so that's why Ditto is going to be really important. And yeah, I hope, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I hope you guys are ready to cheer me on. I am going to do my best and hopefully win. Uh, Jerry is a good opponent. He is very active in this current metagame, doing well on the ladder, and is active in a lot of draft leagues and has a lot of experience. So I'm going to look back at some of my previous matches with him and see kind of what play style he has. Given the offensive nature of his team, I'd imagine he's going to try to make more aggressive plays, but we'll, we'll see and we'll adapt and do our best. But hope to see you guys around at the actual battle. So looking forward to that. And until that battle, this is Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.